The History of Bitcoin We've gone over a lot of material the past six episodes, so let us take a pause for a quick history lesson. So grab your popcorn and your lava. This is the history of Bitcoin. In November 2008, a white paper was posted to a cryptographic mailing list. The paper was entitled, Bitcoin, a Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System. The author of this paper was listed as Satoshi Nakamoto. It is believed that this was just a pseudonym, because as of today, nobody has been able to identify who this person really is. What we do know is that Satoshi integrated many of the ideas from the online cypherpunk community. The cypherpunks were an informal group that started in the 1980s, and they aimed to achieve privacy and security through proactive use of cryptography. Some of the notable members of the cypherpunk community include Wei Dai, a computer engineer best known as the creator of B-Money. In 1998, he described the ledger, which would later become the blockchain. Satoshi Nakamoto communicated with him as he was creating Bitcoin. And Satoshi even referenced his research in the original Bitcoin white paper. Nick Sabo. He designed a mechanism for decentralized digital currency he called BitGold. Although BitGold was never implemented, it is believed to be a direct precursor to Bitcoin architecture. He also invented the idea of smart contracts a feature widely used by Bitcoin competitor Ethereum. Adam Back. He invented the proof-of-work algorithm. And as you learned from earlier videos, proof-of-work is the foundation of Bitcoin's security model. Hal Finney. He was the creator of the reusable proof-of-work system and the second user of the Bitcoin network. May he rest in peace. Now Satoshi borrowed different ideas from crypto pioneers like these and many others, and he introduced the paper to the world. I wonder if he knew what it would one day become. In January 2009, the Bitcoin network came into existence with the release of the first open source Bitcoin client and the issuance of the first Bitcoins. Satoshi mined the first block himself. This block is known as the Genesis block. Included in the first block was a message from Satoshi that read, The Times, 3rd January 2009, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. It is believed that he included this message to prove that this block was mined on or after January 3rd. When the Genesis block was mined, a block reward was introduced to the network, and that reward was 50 bitcoins. The very first bitcoin transaction occurred soon after, when Satoshi sent 10 Bitcoin to Hal Finney. It is believed that Satoshi mined over 1 million Bitcoins before disappearing from the network. Before he left, he gave ownership of Bitcoin.org and client software to different developers to make it difficult for there to be one central authority. In the early days, pricing for Bitcoin was handled in the Bitcoin forums. One of the earliest transactions involved purchasing two pizzas for 10,000 bitcoins. So I guess that means back in 2009, one bitcoin was worth less than 0 0.001 cents. Wow, I hope that pizza guy saved his bitcoins because today 10,000 bitcoin is worth over $40 million. On August 15, 2010, hackers exploited a vulnerability in the network and stole $184 million from the network. Bitcoin developers quickly identified the bug and closed the exploit. To date, this has been the only major security flaw in the network's history. Vendors and clients on the network, however, have not been so lucky. The most well-known hacking case on a vendor was the Mt. Gox case. Mt. Gox was a Bitcoin exchange based in Japan, and it was launched in 2010 by Jed McCaleb. In 2011, Jeb sold MT Gox to Mark Carpellis, who lived in Japan. And by 2013, MT Gox was handling over 70% of all Bitcoin transactions worldwide. In 2014, however, they were hacked and lost over 850,000 Bitcoins, which is roughly $3.5 billion in today's money. 
In 2011, former Google employee Charlie Lee released Litecoin. Litecoin was a fork of the Bitcoin blockchain. The only difference was the time between blocks had been reduced to 2.5 minutes from 10 minutes. Also, the maximum number of coins allowed would be 84 million as opposed to 21 million in Bitcoin. This was the birth of the altcoins. And the crypto market has never been the same. Today, there are now thousands of altcoins in the market. As Bitcoin grew in popularity, the network started running into scaling issues. Essentially, it became harder to handle the large number of transactions in a timely manner. There were several proposals brought forward that were meant to tackle this issue by different groups. The Bitcoin core team, primarily made up of developers in the USA, proposed SegWit as a solution. SegWit is a process by which the block size limit on a blockchain is increased by removing signature data from Bitcoin transactions. Another solution was proposed by the largest Bitcoin miners, primarily located in Asia. And they didn't want to remove signature data, they just wanted to increase the block size. There was an ideological battle between the different groups. And eventually the miners decided to separate from Bitcoin. And so on August 1st, 2017, Bitcoin Cash was created as a fork from the Bitcoin network. What happens next? We'll just have to wait and see. But as of now, this has been the history of Bitcoin.